James chapter 1. Oh, happy days. Woo. Is everybody there? Verse 12. Hallelujah. Everyone say blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Who endures the influence of emotional attacks of sin, fear, love of money, selfishness, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Simple. Who endures all of those attacks of temptation. When he has been approved, he will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who what? Love him. Again, did you notice the final was love him. Love him. Love him. So what is he saying? He says, look, at you're going to endure all temptation because I'm your love. And that's no longer your love. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires or emotions. Amen. And then what? Entice. In other words, it's ties to say, activate it. Agree with it. So they're drawn away because they come into a, they agree and cooperate. Let me share with you. This is called spiritual suicide. It's suicide in the spirit. Why? Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown brings forth what? Death. That is called spiritual suicide. Do not be deceived, my bre beloved brethren. Every good gift and every precious gift is from above. It comes from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadowing of turning. Of his own will he bought, brought. I like to use the word bought also because he bought us, didn't he? But he brought us forth by the what? Word of truth. So what's going to keep you then? The word of truth. If you are brought by the word of truth, then the word of truth is going to keep you, isn't it? But if you're not utilizing the word of truth or the promises of God or acknowledging them, you will drift into a lost state of being, living outside of salvation's truth. That we might be a kind of first fruits of, cre of his creatures. You know, this is so powerful. Again, people are falling into greed. They cooperate into a spiritual suicide, not fighting or resisting with the word that brought them out of bondage. Brought us into a birth of a new creation. In a new creation, all things have passed away, all things have become new. But still, that's our choice to either allow those old things to be present or to walk away from them and continue to go forward. And become a God pleaser, not a man pleaser, or an emotional pleaser. Luke 9. You know, when we realize that, and this is the area where we must constantly recognize, things that have come from our past are now in front of us. And we're agreeing with them. Whatever it may be. It could be reactions. It could be, most of it is usually desire or emotion. Wanting something. Well, it's, you know, well, I used to have it, now I want it again. Those are areas that are what God says that I've delivered you from them already and you're trying to build on them again. It's called an abomination. And those things will move and separate you from God. And one thing you don't want to have is a long-distance relationship. Because it doesn't last. In verse 23, Then Jesus said to them all, If anyone desires, hello, desire, there is that word, desire. Do you desire to go after him? To come after me. Do you desire to seek him? Do you, is he your number one desire? 
let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In other words, desire harm, um, we must deny harmful desires that associate with the past life and exchange the old for the new. By recognizing the cross of exchange, that's where it's all at, isn't it? Jesus paid the price for me and you knew to be exchanged. And follow the example of Christ in a life of exchange. No longer sur survival life, but a surrender life. That means submissive. That means respectful. Again, we are now in a place of denying harmful desires that associate with past life. And that's called deny self. Denying your desires of your past life. Picking up the cross is the exchange of the old for the new. Because that's the price Jesus paid. By recognizing the cross of exchange. It's called the cross of exchange. That's where everything was exchanged. And then you're able to follow and express the character of Christ. By only living a life of exchange. If you're not living a life in exchange, of exchange, you're not living in the spirit. And you can't be pleasing God. Acts 3. One little thing. The word says a little leaven leavens a whole lump. And it's like uh, all of a sudden a part of a scale comes and then more comes and more comes and more comes. Until you finally exchange it, it will grow. It will infiltrate. It will take root unless you're willing to exchange it. Acts 3.17 Did I say X3? Okay. Let's speak it. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance and did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Why did he suffer? To make an exchange for us. He said, repent. Therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. In other words, <laughs> repent. Why are we repenting then? Actually, for not trusting. For coming in agreement again with those emotions. For self-will. For emotional agreements of destruction. For false agreements. We repent for those things. Why? Because the blood must be activated so the spirit is access. So you cannot exchange without a repent. Does everybody got it? See, people try to exchange, but they haven't repented for what they did. And that gives the enemy a legal right to still hold that. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. And he said, repent, therefore, being converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before. Whom heaven must receive until times of restoration of all things. How are things restored? By exchange. Which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers... The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Wow. In other words, those who are not willing, that says those not willing to do the will of God will be what? Destroyed. Is everybody Okay. So in this, repent is the basis of all exchange. And without it, there is no exchange. You know, that's why it's important that, again, we go back to his promises and his word and what he says. Do you really believe it or don't you? And it says that the word was no effect because it wasn't mixed with faith. 
Amen. Remember, faith is your currency to purchase. And so the lack of faith in his promise is a lack of heavenly currency. We must believe. And faith without works is no good. In other words, faith without what you're saying, you can speak all you want, but if you ain't doing it, it ain't going to work. This is the same thing without putting God's promises into effect, making them active. It's our responsibility to activate everything that God's given me and you. But the enemy wants to nullify that. He wants to deactivate everything that God has placed in you. James 4. Life of exchange. Verse 1. Let's speak it. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires, your emotions for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. And when you ask, you don't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your emotional desires that are destructive. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that the friendship with the world is eminency with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearn, yearns jealously, but he gives more grace there. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. In other words, submit to God. Remember, pride always refuses acknowledgement. Amen. Pride will refuse those or acknowledge harmful emotions. These are desires. They're wrong. They cause harm. Agreements and choices that people agree or choose to agree with in these emotional effects. This is how the enemy controls people by emotional feelings of self. And it prevents a life of exchange unless they are acknowledging these things. We, do no, we no longer live a life of emotion. We live a life in the Spirit, which is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Amen? So it's a life of exchange that allows me and you to stay in the Spirit. Offense and all of these other things. It's all just an emotion. Psalm 119. Blessed, blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. That's his promises. Oh, that my ways were directed. To keep your statutes, then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Blessed are those that recognize the things that defile the temple. Let me tell you, there are emotional feelings that will defile the temple. Why? Because they're destructive. And what is it allowing, by allowing a cursed desires to inflict or infiltrate the temple? We are the temple of God. Blessed are the undefiled, but cursed are the defiled. That means there's more open doors then. Acts 10.
verse 36. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power and went about doing good and healing all who were what? Oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. In other words, oppressed means controlled by the enemy. How does he control individuals? By emotion, by feelings. That's a place of bondage. Oppressed, under control of destructive emotions. So what is he saying? Jesus was anointed. What? To break those. To overcome them. Remember he says, I was anointed. I've come to set the captives free. I mean, in reality, you've got to look at something. What was he setting us free from? All of this emotional, all this emotional garbage, all of this emotional destruction. So we could have peace and joy and righteousness, but in the Holy Spirit, in the anointing, it breaks all the yokes. Your strength comes from the presence of God. Amen? Again, how does the exchange start? It's activated by first repentance. Because the blood must go first, and then the Spirit follows. And then what happens is your confession of what God promises. I exchange. I exchange. I exchange my sicknesses and diseases for your stripes and healing. I exchange my oppression and heaviness for your oil of gladness and joy. And you walk away from it. Why? Because when you exchange it, it goes back to the cross, and now you walk away from it. Don't look for it. Hallelujah. People are trying to get out of their own afflictions when they're still standing in the puddle. I can't believe God hasn't delivered me yet. Step out of it. Hallelujah. Psalm 77. Glory. Psalm 77, verse 10. We're going to need to get a, an emotional linebacker. <laughs> Just like the Christmas linebacker. Hallelujah. Get you out of that puddle. <laughs> Verse 10, let's speak in it. And I said, this is my anguish, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Did you notice that he said, I'm going to remember. I'm going to bring to remembrance all the things of God and, how, and what he's done for me. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on your work. In other words, I will focus and talk of your deeds. Now I'm going to confess all the good things you've done for me. Your way, O oh God, is in the what? That word sanctuary is a representation of his presence. Your way is in your presence, Lord. That's how I get to know your way. That's how I get strengthened in your presence. Who is so great a God as our God. You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the peoples. You have with your arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Again, the sanctuary is a representation of his presence. Why? Because in a sanctuary you can come, 
get his presence because in his presence there's the exchange. Listen, there's times when God is closer to you that you seem, that you sense. There's times when the Lord is like, man, right on you. And then there's times where it's like, man, you know what? Where are you? You're on me yesterday. Now where are you today? But he loves it. I, like I shared, his greatest game is called hide and seek. He loves it. He created it and invented it. So anybody wants to know, what's the game of God? Hide and seek. Psalm 73. Hallelujah. Verse 17, Psalm 73. If I had said I will speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. Until I went where? Into the sanctuary of God. Then I would understood there. In other words, after I got in the presence of God and pressed through, I understood now. Snap, what an idiot I was. You know, I mean, I can't believe I agreed. What? Gosh, Lord, thanks for making that right. See, you got to press in to get into his presence. One of the things he doesn't, the enemy does is get you all messed up so you can't even press through. You're so caught up in you, you, that you can't I'll walk away from you. It's grabbing onto your ankles and screaming. The old man, don't let go. And the only way you can do it is to bring him in the presence of God and get the Holy Ghost baseball bat. Boom! Get off in the name of Jesus. Like a choo chihuahua grabbing your ankles. Amen. I want more of your presence. That's what we're saying today. We want more. Did you get more? Well, hallelujah. Then you should have clarity now. You should have joy. You should have peace if you got through. Listen, you can't carry the old man through. It ain't happening. It's like bouncing off a concrete wall. Psalm 20. Thank you, Master. Verse 1, Psalm 20, verse 1. May the Lord answer you in the day of what? Trouble. May the God, may the name of the God of Jacob defend you. And may he send you what? Help from his Sanctuary or his presence. And strengthen you. Whoa, snap. Out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt offerings. So what's he saying? He says, you know, I get, you get help from my presence. Help from my presence. Now, his presence is also associated when his presence is there he speaks that means his words are there amen the words that brought me and you out of bondage out of darkness into the light those words those words of promise so now we must maintain that to live a life of exchange by listen the word of god is not activated without the presence of god does everybody get it see people are trying to use the word of god without the presence of god then it becomes a seed, not a sword. There's a difference. That's why we fight for the presence of God. Listen, when you first began to realize something wasn't right, or maybe you just finally surrendered and realized, you know what, I can't live this way any longer. That was conviction. Where did that come from? The presence of God. So when you get convicted, you got a visitation. Does everybody get it? <laughs> So when you repent, it means you want more. Wow. There's a sense of cleanness. There's a sense of purity when true repentance comes. There's a, there's a, a removing of all guilt and condemnation. 
God is gentle and loving. The enemy is a moron. Temporary, too. He beats you down, but we're not to let him. If you get into press through to God's presence, you're going to turn around and go, what the heck? And turn around and start slapping the devil. Instead of him slapping you. Amen? So help comes from the presence. Strength comes from his presence. Psalm 34. Hallelujah. Psalm 34, verse 15. Let's speak it. But in my adversity they rejoiced and gathered together. Oh, I'm in 35, sorry. I thought that didn't sound right. Let's try it again. Verse 15. The righteous cry out and the Lord does what? Oh, that's 17. Let's write it again. <laughs> the eyes of Guy <laughs> need to see better. <laughs> Hallelujah. The eyes of the Lord are on the what? Righteous. And his ears are open to their cry. Now, what kind of cry is God's ears open to? Repentance. Forgive me, Lord. They're not open. Listen, it's not a woe is me cry. It's not a pity cry. God doesn't answer those things. He's looking for someone that's true hearted and repentance. Even when we make a mistake, Lord, forgive me. It's a heart that says, you know what? I offended you. Now the world might look at it like, it ain't nothing, but your closeness to him. The littlest thing, you're, you're repentant. Why? Because you don't want anything to be in between. Nothing. It says, the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their what? Troubles. Troubles are known as mistakes. Amen? So when you make a mistake, what do you do? You repent. <laughs> if you made a false agreement, you, you know, if when you make it, you repent. That's what he says. And those, and the Lord is near to those who have a what? Broken heart. You know what? Your heart is broke. Why? Because you offended him. You did something wrong. You know, Lord, gosh, I can't take this. It's killing me. But you know what? What that does? He opens the door. Come on in. Let's talk about this. And now you're in his presence. Now you're, his presence is bringing healing and his words are bringing promise. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as has a contrite spirit. Humble. I know you're only pleasing other men. Stop it. I know you're souring over your past. Stop it. I gave you a new one. Exchange it. But you don't like what I gave you? I mean, can you imagine really thinking about, well, you don't want what I gave you? you aren't you a new creation? Do you still want to live the old life? You know how many people are willing to give up when they go through trials and tribulations? They're willing to run back to the old man? That's a coward. The cry of repentance, not woe is me. He rescues those that trust his words of promise. First Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. Everybody okay? You know, you got to remember right now that everything you look at is trying to bring you to your old man. Everywhere. Hallelujah. 
The old man does what it wants to do. Doctrine of Satan, do what I feel. Do what I feel. That's the doctrine of Satan. Do what you feel like. That was a battle when we were younger and out in the world. Look at how much music affected us to do what we felt like. Whoa. People are still doing what they feel like. And it's totally misleading and destructive. Well, I think I'll just do this again. Because remember we talked about that. It re reality or uh, delayed judgment. <laughs> And verse 2, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, as his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the what? Knowledge, knowledge of him who called us by the glory of virtue and virtue and by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises so you and I could exchange and partake. That through these you may be partakers of the what? Divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. Lust is an emotion. Without the presence and decree of his promises, the divine nature is not activated. Hmm. The enemy knows he has no power over the divine nature. He can't mess with it. He can't touch it. So this is where that life of exchange is constant for me and you. There isn't a person in this room that's not been offended, rejected, or whatever. It depends what you do with it. There isn't a person in this room that hasn't made a mistake. But people are still looking at their mistakes. But that was yesterday. We're not to live from the past to the present. We're to live from the future to the present. And only by that exchange can we live that way. It must be a life of exchange to live in the presence of God and allow the divine nature to be activated, which the enemy can't get near. So many people have struggles. And it's not the enemy that struggles. They do. They're the ones that have the problems because that's all they've done is picked up one little leaven that says, woe is me. Or what I've done. But you don't understand. Like God doesn't. He knows it all. There isn't anything he's not missed, believe me. Amen? <laughs> Psalm 15, and we'll close here. A guideline to his presence. Again, this is where we look at and examine ourselves. What's, what's your leading desire? Amen? It's just like, what's your leading voice? In verse 15, let's all speak it together. It's a guideline to his pres presence and promises and the divine nature. Why? Because it's a life of exchange. You're, so in this exchange, we're constantly exchanging our human nature for the divine nature, aren't we? Verse 1, Lord, who may abide in your presence or your tabernacle? And who may dwell in your holy hill? He who what? Walks up rightly. Let me ask you this. Can you walk out rightly without exchanging? No. And who works righteousness, who speaks the truth in his heart. In other words, he examines himself. You know what, Lord? What I just done isn't right. What I just thought's not right. What I just spoke isn't right. It was disrespectful. Amen? Listen, you bring the blood there, and you make an exchange. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. These are people that have access to the presence of God. And whose eyes a vile person is despised. 
but he honors those who fear the Lord. Reverence, honor, and respect. Look, at, you'll know that immediately in how a person acts, speaks, reacts, or responds. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He, he who does not put out his money to usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved or can't be touched. Amen? Why? Because you're protected by the presence of God and you're maintaining the divine nature by acknowledging and partaking of the promises and covenant of God. You are walking away from everything. What, what is the main thing that holds people in that place is fear. Fear. Some people are afraid of fear to exchange. People are afraid of something new. They're afraid of making exchange. You know how many people are still on. God wants to heal people, but they'd rather be disabled so he can get a check. That's sin. Preventing God from doing what God wants to do for money. That's an idol. You know, money and pride is the God of this world. God is a lot more for me and you, but we must be willing to make that exchange. Amen? And let him be God in us, his children. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the seed be protected and rooted so that we may be well-pleasing to you in all the things that we do. For your name, for your glory, and for your honor. Live in a life of exchange. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise.